and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Nantucket. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us, biggest firm outside of Boston. And as a result, everybody gets to do what they like. I like elder law, so that's what I do. This show, though, has nothing to do with elder law. It, is, it has to do with my friends Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And if you've seen my show or my, my uh, presentations at the Salt Marsh, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they're in Nantucket, that means they want to be here. They don't want to be with their kids in San Diego or Denver or, or off island. You know, they don't. And definitely not in Martha's Vineyard. They want to be here. And so the question is, who are the people they need to know and what are the programs they need to know about in order to stay here for the rest of their lives? So, as you know, I've got this great co-host that I suckered into doing this, Alison <laughs> Forsgren, because I don't know anybody because I'm from out there. Um, and she's really been here for a long time because she always finds these great guests. Although this time, I actually know this guest because when I started coming here, which is now a long time ago, it was like eight years ago, inevitably, no matter what I would, who I would talk to about what they do, when I'd say, and how does this other thing work? They'd say, oh, well, you have to talk to Peter McKay, right? So I eventually talked to Peter McKay back when he was doing his old job, which probably he'll talk about a little bit. So Allison. Yes. So that's Peter McKay. I right? know. But you know, but see, you know, everybody knows this guy, right? Right. right. <laughs> well, welcome to our show. We thank you for coming on and explaining what is probably the most difficult thing I can imagine thinking about. <laughs> right next to going nuclear fission. Right. <laughs> well, oh, no, maybe, it's harder than that. <laughs> you know, it's, approaching 65 and right. realizing yeah. that you can get some help with your insurance is something that I look forward to, but no idea how it works. So first of all, um, Peter McKay Consultant is your term. Mm -hmm. Peter McKay Consulting, yeah. I... Yes. And we will provide a, um, an address and phone number. Okay. Okay. Um, and you are a licensed social worker mm -hmm. with a history of? <laughs> Running the social work department at the hospital for 33 years. Starting from a staff of and going to a staff Starting of? Starting from a staff of one, ending with a staff of seven and a bunch of on-call interpreters and social workers, so I was lucky. And so, but being a social worker at the hospital, you did discharge plans for every patient? That was the primary job. The primary focus was discharge planning. It was to make sure the patients on the what was known as the med surge floor had appropriate planning for their departure, whether they went back home without any help, with help, had to go to a rehab facility, nursing home, making sure that whatever caused them to be in the hospital was addressed thoroughly, explained to them and family, and they were prepared to transition from the hospital setting to wherever they're going. That includes the ER as well. And then from there, it just started expanding into a lot of other things as well. That started with Obamacare, no, Romney Care actually is when... Well, that's where the insurance part came into play because mm -hmm. Mitt Romney was effective in expanding the available options for people in Massachusetts as opposed to so many other states. We're fortunate to be here. And that mentality has continued for a long period of time. Now it's known as Connector Care, but it still expands the eligibility of, of affordable or subsidized insurance for those people who are on the lower income sale. I can remember having a pre-existing condition that couldn't be uh, yeah, yeah. that that couldn't be worked on until mm -hmm. uh, until that came into play. Yeah. So that was a big deal for me. Well, it was those types of things that warranted my creating the position of healthcare advocate and Roman specialist at the hospital some 16 years ago, which has become very firmly established to help people get on whatever they may be eligible for, and the hospitals kept those positions up even since I left, which is very good for the Nantucket community because it's complicated and. Right. Yeah. And it's good for the hospital. And it's good for, it's what right? I call the win-win because yeah. the patients get their needs serviced because they go in with an insurance card. The hospital, as opposed to bad debt, which is a bad term, bad debt is a debt, they have an insurance, they get an income. So the patients get seen in a timely manner, get care, and the hospital gets reimbursed, all good. So, so that's, a wonder, that's a wonderful thing. So, so mm -hmm. how did you, you eventually decide that you wanted to leave this magic job? I mean, this is like a... Well, I did leave a little early. Uh, I heard the golf had something to do with it. It seems to me I heard... Golf has something to do with everything, doesn't it, though? <laughs> this is one of those guys. That's why, right? He's one of them. I'm right. one of them. Well, coach on the high school team, I put a club in my son's hand when he was a year and a half. Okay, I'm obsessed. Okay. But it is, it's a fun sport I can play. So it teaches a lot of things, too. Character, honesty, I don't think so. It's a fun sport. I happen to love it, and I get to do more of it now. But that wasn't the primary focus. We just had a little bit of diverging points of view for a period of time. I'm very focused on the patients and the clients, and it was a little more emphasis on the finances than I was comfortable with. So you decided to go out on your own? I and decided to go out on my own, yes. Take a, and take a break first, yep. right? You took a break, right? Mm -hmm. 
and then and and to go out on your own and then start kind of using this pile of knowledge that mm -hmm. you had to help some people figure out what is a very complicated thing, which is pieces of the of the of the insurance system, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So I, I told Allison, I said, we have to have Peter on because he's going to talk about Medicare. And she said, oh my God, I'm not going to, what am I going to say? I don't know anything about Medicare. I said, I said, this is simple. I don't either. That's the reason why we're having him <laughs> on. People think that I had to get it, right? Yeah. I think I'm a pretty bright guy. I just totally beyond me, right? Yeah. So for folks who are watching, can we just, can you talk a little bit about kind of the basic systems, the Medicare A and B and mm -hmm. the Medicare supplement and what mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about Medicare D. We'll talk about drugs. The drug plan. The well, so, so you yeah. turn 65. All right. First of all, you're eligible for Medicare by three different means. The vast majority of people are eligible by age when you hit 65. Whether or not you go on Social Security. Whether or not. Two separate things altogether. The, the right. Medicare is the insurance part. Social Security is the entitlement part. Two separate things. So. With Medicare, you're eligible at the age of 65 or you're eligible by virtue of a disability. If you have a disability as approved by Social Security, you, will be, you would be eligible for Medicare two years after the disability is determined. Two years out. And the third ca category for eligibility for Medicare is uh, dialysis, renal failure. Okay, if someone has to go on dialysis, you would also, that's the third category. No matter what age. No matter what age as far as that's concerned. So those are the only three means of getting on. But again, the vast majority get on Medicare by virtue of age. How did they pick renal failure instead of uh, cancer or that, something? That's a good question. I can't answer that. Okay. Probably more because of the chronicity of it, that the fact that it is a long-term thing, as was disability, whereas cancer may be able to be cured. That's, a, that's not coming from factual knowledge. That's mm -hmm. coming from just right. anecdotal information. I would assume they just had an unbelievable lobby. Because that, that is, <laughs> that's, that's this little piece of the world which is this totally insured piece, kind right. of like no matter what your age, it's like you're just in. Right. right. Well, it sort of also bespeaks to the fact that it is, it's a little bit more haphazard. It isn't nice and simple. I mean, as you were saying, Allison, it isn't a simple means just to get on. It's much more complicated than it should be. Let's face it, I'm just a couple of years from Medicare myself, and I know I'm slowing down a little bit here. It's not as easy to grasp things. It should be much easier, but it isn't. So as you, to your point, Arthur, the fact that I accumulated so much knowledge over all those years, I didn't want to just sit back and do nothing as far as that's concerned. And right. it's something I can still offer. Yeah. And I, let's face it, I do enjoy helping people out. So what he does, he sees people and they give him all these problems. And then he goes and plays golf. And while he's doing that, he, he figures out the answers. Right? He just that's kind of possible. Thinks, yeah, he thinks out the answers. Yeah. So golf has a lot of answers. <laughs> so, so talk about, start off with Medicare. And so Medicare. Medicare. So, Medicare. so you're 65. 65. Which you, means, which means by, by the way, I think you, you actually have to go on or pay a penalty unless you've got insurance already. Correct. Right? Talk unless about you, that and it has to be. So and the reason eligible. why I say that is I'm going to be 70 in, in January, right. but I have, I'm not on yet. And my wife and I... I'm probably going to come out and talk to you because we've got to figure this out. We've got one of those, you know. I, I we've got a. I've come on the company right. plan, and my wife just retired from the teaching thing, right? And so there's all that to figure out. And the question is, is it cheaper for me or for us that I pay my, you know, my my the piece of the plan that I have to pay, right. which is thirty percent of you know a twenty thousand dollar plan, mm -hmm. versus going on Medicare. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and, and as we were talking earlier, Allison said, yeah, but Medicare is free, right? I'm like, mm -hmm. well, no, not exactly. So that's, that's, not exactly. that's the point. That's the point. So talk about Medicare A, A and B in the supplement, and then we'll yep. talk about drugs. So right? Medicare. Medicare comes in two parts, hospital part A and medical part B. Okay. In terms of cost, med med hospital part A in nine times out of 10, 10 cases is you've already paid for during your working years. So that comes at no cost. Part B does come at a cost. It is a graduated scale, okay, and that being the case, if you're on the lowest end of the scale, okay, your premium for this year would have been 135.50. Next year, it's going to be 144.60. A month. A month. A month. Okay. So that's what the that's what the cost for just Medicare is. Yeah, and, okay. it, and that and that number used to be kind of across the board before Obamacare, right? That that, that well, there was always a graded scale. You paid more if you had more of an income. I didn't know that. I and thought it's that also interesting to note that. So let's just say somebody's turning 65 next year in 2020, okay? What their premium is based on their income two years prior. Everybody who has Medicare, their premium is based on their income two years prior. So in 2018, is going to, what you made then is going to determine what your Part B premium is in 2020. Why is in that? In 2021, it's going to be your 2019 income, and so on and so forth. Oh, so it's just the year that is two years just prior. Just that year. 
So for instance, wow. I had a gentleman come to me once in the hospital. So when you're first get, when you're first getting on, your premium must be huge. Well, because you just, like if you just retired, because you had all this income. It could be. It varies. Yeah. So one gentleman is, sold see, a house. I told you this is really interesting. Right? One yeah. gentleman sold a house two years ago, and he came <gasps> to me and said, "Oh my, Peter, my premium went through the roof. What's going on?" I said, "Well, what happened two years ago?" I said, "I sold a house." Well, he jumped <laughs> to the highest level, and his Part B premium went up. The next year after that, it went back down again. So it's subject to variations like that. So I again, see. that also why they set it up that way, Alice, and I can't necessarily answer that question for you. There's probably a logic to it, but I can just interpret and guide. So that so that's how that something piece works. Something sneaky. So it's, and, and that just keeps happening throughout your and it keeps for happening. the rest of your life. It right. just it, it that that it's always it, the two years. Plan. And so good to know. Don't make any money. Two don't years. Make any straight. money. Or at least plan your retirement at least two years past when you were earning you a good earn, amount of money. Yeah, that, that's a good hint. When you're earning a lot of money. I know. So so can you can you talk to if you know off the top of your head, what's the highest rate? You know, you've told us what, what most people are going the to be paying. The highest rate is about 469, I believe, is yeah. thereabouts per month. Yeah, yeah. and so in a time, in per month. Yeah, per month. So times 12, so that you're talking, yeah. that the that's highest more. rate, that can be a $5,000 hit. Now, obviously and, that's just for, and that's just for you. So right. if you've got you and your wife, and your wife's on Medicare B, mm -hmm. she's gonna be paying a premium too. Completely separate, you're not husband and wife at that point in time, you're Mr. And you're determined, and misses, and you, she's determined. See what I mean? This is why this, you know, that that comparison to Medicare, right. that can be a pricey item. Well, can I get my wife on Medicare? No, you could look just at you. As to your point, I'm going to get back to that. But the credible coverage thing with you, are okay. Coverage. Credible coverage. Right now, that's a very well, legal term. Yes, because you, because as you you've mm -hmm. mentioned, as as it happens officially, the Medicare enrollment period or the or period for kind of changing your Medicare deal, just ended. Just for the drug plan. But just for the drug put, plan. Just for the, yeah, so put that over here. I got Stay it. with Medicare. Because okay. with Medicare, hospital part A, medical part B, if in fact you still have insurance through an employer, you can continue to keep that insurance past 65 right. without penalty and enroll in Medicare later without a penalty. If in fact you say, well, I'm healthy, I don't want to pick up Medicare and don't have coverage, you can do that. But should you enroll later, there's delays and penalties. There's a penalty. So the term credible coverage is extremely important. And again, I emphasize that it has to be employer-based coverage. It can't be a direct play policy or state coverage. It has to be employer-based for it oh. to be counting as credible coverage. So, so if you're self-employed, mm -hmm. you would not have credible coverage. If you're self-employed would count because it's employer-based. You, you are your own employer. Okay. Okay, but if you're paying a direct pay policy, mm -hmm. okay, and you want to continue to hold on to that, although I can't understand why you would because that's a lot more expensive right. than Medicare. Medicare. I'm looking yeah. forward to Medicare. Um, uh, but yes, that's that, that would come into that understanding as well. Okay. So back to the Medicare card. So, Red, white, and blue paper card. Hospital Part A and Medical Part B. Now, excuse me. I just want to make sure that I get this credible sure. coverage down because now if I stop working, mm -hmm. right, or if I drop this co other coverage, mm -hmm. do I already have to be on Medicare at the time that you I drop the coverage? You have to plan for that transition, for that in anticipation of when you're going to lose your credible coverage. I get it. Because I have to be on Medicare by, like immediately after I get off? Or do, or do I have some kind of window to... You, I, that's a good question. I'm going to yeah. hesitate on answering yeah. that with 100% surety. Yeah. I know you... For the open enroyment period so for good. Medicare... I'm so glad that I got one that he doesn't uh, actually there you go. know. That's you get three true. months before your 65th birthday, the month of your 65th birthday, and three months after your 65th birthday to enroll without penalty. So taking that premise yeah. as a standard, I would presume there's a little bit of latitude from changing from credible to Medicare. I get but it. I get it. I wouldn't advise it because being exposed... Let's face it. You don't you want to be, want, I would I not be, guide somebody or counsel somebody for that. You wouldn't want to be exposed. Okay, right. so 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 that's how Medicare A and B. That's the cost. That's the cost. Now the coverage is what particularly is important. The best way to describe coverage is to look be very literal. Hospital Part A. That's what it says right below your claim number. The only time Hospital Part A pays is if you are hospitalized. I mean, put your head in a pillow, spend the night. You're in the hospital. Okay. And admit it. And admit it. Not as as an acute care patient, by the way. Not as an observation which I won't get into too much right now, but there's different types of hospitalizations. That and nursing home care, which most of the people I counsel at 65, at least that's down the line. So with that understanding, hospitalization, that's it. Every other medical charge. X-ray. Everything. Hot if it's doctor, not a hospitalization, doctor. it's part B. Chiropractor. Part B. Ear, part B. Labs, PT, ambulance. If it's not a hospitalization, it's part B. Drugs in the hospital? Drugs is the exception. Drugs well, in the hospital, yes. Drugs, drugs in the hospital is covered under Part A. Is Part A. If I you're see. hospitalized, right? But all that other stuff is Part B. Right. Everything else is Part B. So, and, um, and then if you're not hospitalized, 
Part B. But you're visiting the hospital. Part B. If you're doing it always, it's always Part B. Yep. So is there, so you pay a monthly fee according to your income, yep. and then is there... And here's the coverage. So that, this is important to understand because uh, right. you're going from, as you inferred before, there are actually three cards. You go from one card under 65, which covers hospitalization, it covers all your other medical events, and covers prescriptions. Right. Now Classic. with Medicare, you go to three cards. Medicare, as I described, is your first and primary card. Gets first crack at everything, okay? Again, if you're hospitalized now, Part A will pay everything. Next year, the deductible, though, will be $1,408, okay? Whether you stay five minutes, one day, two days, five days, 10 days, makes no difference. Why okay? is that? That's just the way it works, okay? Too many whys. <laughs> too many. I got because, a lot of whys. That's right. You're, the why but, and Medicare the, and, and that's, answers don't yeah. go on the same But that's why having somebody like Peter is so important yeah. because none of this is intuitive. No. This is 100% not necessarily right. rational. This is the result right. of a million it's legislative shot. deals. Right. And so, right. If, so right. correct. Right. So you're 65, you're hospitalized. If you get hospitalized and you just have Medicare, you get hospitalized, the entire bill would be paid for except for that deductible. But, but they're going to send you a bill but for But next that. year you pay the deductible or nope. the year? Okay. Technically that deductible applies per benefit period, which means that if you're hospitalized, it doesn't make any difference how many days. When you're discharged, if you're readmitted again within 60 days, there's not another deductible applied. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you readmit it again after 60 days, there's another deductible applied. New period of illness. New period of illness, exactly. So you have that little window. Okay. Now, that's part A. Now, the lion's share, 99.9% .9 of medical services, part is covered by, as I said, medical part B. They have an annual deductible, which next year will be $198. And then they pay 80%. Right. So okay. the good news is the deductible is real low. But the, the bad news is... They pay 80%. Exactly. If that $20, it's 20%. And let's face it, medical bills being what they are, 20% of almost any medical bill is not insignificant. No. Yeah, wow. Which is why. No, it, I'm, I, I'm just going to say, for I, I mean, I'm on my, just my regular coverage. Right. Right. And, and, I, and I just had, I had an incident, as you know, mm -hmm. I fell into Nantucket Harbor. And for various reasons, I, had disconnect, I ended up disconnecting a, 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 scary. a, yeah, a, yeah. a muscle. My, right. And I had to get it reattached. Mm -hmm. Right. And the total bill. Twenty-five thousand dollars, right? Yeah. But just but the deductible is several thousand dollars, yeah. right? Yeah. And but imagine that that twenty-five thousand. What's twenty-five percent? What's twenty percent of twenty-five thousand dollars? Oh. It's five thousand yeah. dollars, right? Right. So these can be big, mm -hmm. big numbers. Big, but they can be very big numbers. No question about it. Right. So is there a Part C that covers the overage? Well, actually, there is a Part C, but that's something completely different okay. too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I know we got a D coming up. Yeah, we right? got there are for A, B, C, D. Okay? okay, but put C aside for the second. Yeah. Okay. So A and B, so you have that, which is why most people, if finances being what they are, would pick up what's known as a supplemental plan. This is a private plan. Now, if there's three right. terms that mean the same thing, supplemental, secondary, and Medigap. Three different terms mean exactly the same thing, okay? So right. it is a private plan <clears throat> to supplement what Medicare doesn't cover. So this is not offered by the government? This is not, this is private. And you have to sign up for that and pay it separately? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, there are, and there are many companies that offer well, this, I'll be honest with you, no. Massachusetts is overly regulated, unlike most of the states, like Florida, where I guide a lot of people as well, which has a oodles of options. Massachusetts only has five players. That's it. And the interesting thing, and I've said this so many times, I still get a little smile on it, every one of them offers exactly the same plans. And do they all offer it on Nantucket? Yes. Mm -hmm. doesn't make, because it's a, Medica is a federal plan. works in any state. Okay, so with those options, as the kids would say, well, which one's the cheapest? Duh, I'll take that one, because they're all reputable. There's Blue Cross, Humana, Harvard Pilgrim, Tufts, and AARP. Okay, of those, just out of curiosity, a little quiz for you guys. Blue Cross, Humana, Harvard Pilgrim, Tufts, and AARP. Of those five, which do you think is offering the least expensive plan? AARP. I have no idea. I would have guessed AARP also. Highest. Blue Cross. I would have thought they were the highest. Exactly, most people would. And I have no allegiance in that capacity, but right. whichever one's that, the cheapest, if somebody undercuts them, the, that's my new favorite plan. Beca because, the, because what they have to offer, is exactly see, the that's the interesting thing, I, that I, one of the few things I did learn about Medicare is that, that that's all, the reason why a lot of those plans are the same, there's there are mandate required, there's some required things that right. have to be in these plans. Right. Medicare says, for you to be offering a so-called Medigap plan right. as a kind of consumer protection thing, you can't be calling it Medigap mm -hmm. if it isn't really Medigap, right? right? right. And so you got to be like, you got to be, Filling all of these little gaps in Medicare That's A and the Medicare regulatory B. Part. The, here's, right. You have to offer it this way. I can't come in with a convoluted way and offer Peter McKay Medigap insurance without meeting exactly those guidelines. Without really filling those gaps. Exactly. So right? 
you can't do anything about the rate of your part A and B, but the supplemental is something that you have, you have to check choice. every year. Right. You can show every year you have to. No, say. no, no, no. The supplemental that one I like to say along with the Medicare card collects dust. Okay, because once you get a good supplemental plan, and there's slight variations, but I really won't harp on that. You pick a plan that supplements Medicare well, put that together, and yeah. forget about it. Okay, it's only the drug plan, which we'll get to in a minute, right. that needs to be looked at every year. But the supplemental plan, and basically, and there's a new federal regulation that came about that's just starting next year, by the way, too, which took away one of the options and forced a supplemental option. But basically, what you're looking at is one option of the supplemental coverages, okay, will pick up, it's a less, less expensive, we'll pick up the 20%, which let's face it, that's still the lion's share of charges. So the only right. exposure would be that $198 deductible, relatively negligible, and if you're hospitalized, you'll still have that de big deductible of $1,400. Right. Okay. So, so across, for the typical plan, that you know, the, the five companies that offer the five same, the, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, same packages, mm -hmm. You said one of them right now is the lowest and one of them is the highest. Can you give us the range of what those numbers actually are? Uh, the range right now for the, oh, uh, well, the lowest one right now uh, for the less expensive of the two plans known as Core is 104 and the range for the highest one. $104 per month. Per month, mm -hmm. yep. And the range for the highest one, don't quote me on this yeah. one because I don't really have yeah. to look yeah. at it because yeah. hi it's higher. Yeah. But it's usually anywhere from about 20 to $40 higher a month. Oh, Not so it would be 130 But that's times 12, 12 months. Right, times 12. It listened to me not that much. It's right. Like, so it's right. Well. No, but that you know, but you know, compared to some of those other numbers, right. so it's, so say it's lower than two thousand dollars a year. Yeah, sounds. And like that's it. the less expensive right. than the other policy now, which used to be known as bronze and would cover everything. Yeah. Which was a hundred dollars a month more. Is now. Is now that's not option. That's for it's still grandfather for anybody who has it, but anybody turning sixty five now yeah. won't have that option. They'll have a new plan, which believe it or not is known as Sapphire. 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 Isn't that great? And what Isn't does that, that cost you? That costs 177 and that's the lowest of the options. Times 12. Times 12. Which It's less of a difference between the other, but yeah, that yeah, will yeah. pick up that inpatient deductible. I see. And of course the 20%. So if you just don't want to be thinking about paying any, nothing, that's yeah. about it. Right. Then you you're have... going to pay about $2,500 yeah, in premium so, yeah. for that. Together with that, the, the, the monthly Medicare. The, and that's the, taken out of your, if you're getting Social Security, right. that's taken out. Right. right. What is? The part, part B of Medicare. Regular. First card is Medicare, hospital uh -huh. and medical, A and B. Then a supplemental, private, and then the drug plan, which we didn't get to yet. So right. the Medicare Part B will be taking, if you're not collecting Social Security, you'll be paying it quarterly. And if you are take collecting, I mean, then it'll be automatically deducted from your Social Security check. Right. And it will always, there's a, people make enough in Social Security to cover that. It always covers part. it. In most cases. It, it yeah. always covers it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Nobody that's... has less. And let me put it that way. Actually, if you had less than that, yes, it is right. always covered because you'll get SSI, which is a right. form of making sure you have a minimum amount of Social Security. SSI right. stands for? Supplemental Security Income. As opposed to SSDI, which is Social Dis Security Disability Income. That's the, the, the one that you get if you get disabled right. before right. you're 65, and which gets you onto Medicare. Right. So now we're going to spend, spend some a little time. So the so bottom line, mm -hmm. If I want to know as a senior that I'm not going to pay any medical bills, mm -hmm. I got to buy. I, I'm going to know that I'm going to get. I'm going to get this Medicare D deduction mm -hmm. every month, which is going to be some amount that starts at what's the lowest possible Medicare one? B deduction. Right, Medicare B deduction. Okay, yep. which, some the lowest amount, amount is one forty four sixty. One forty four, but it can be as high as four hundred over four seventy, depending on my income. Correct. Two years ago, correct. Everybody remember that. Two years right? prior, right? And, and, and I got to buy the supplemental plan, which is going to cost me on the high side a couple thousand anywhere, dollars a year. Right, anywhere from one hundred and five to about one hundred seventy-seven a month. Right. Got it. So now talk to us about. So we have Medicaid. two two yeah. bills to pay mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. two, yeah. two monthly. But bills. But mind you, two monthly bills. But put in perspective, you got to say in the lower end. Majority is still on the lower end. You got one hundred and forty-five, and you get the less expensive. You got another hundred and four hundred. You're about two fifty. What do you mean the less expensive? Less, uh, the two options. Remember, one is the supplemental plans. One, the less expensive plan is about 104. The higher plan is 177. Those are the two options you've got. The 104 plan will pick up the 20% that Medicare doesn't pay, but you still have to pay that hospital deductible. Okay, all right. right. The more expensive plan pays them both. And is that the bronze and sapphire? Bronze is no longer available. It's what? core and sapphire. Oh, core and core sapphire. sapphire. So my point being though is, if you have the less expensive plan and lower end of Medicare, you're paying about 250 a month. But You've got 100% coverage. But it's 100%. You're not dropping $25 at the doctor's office. Not, not even dropping. co pays for it. No. No, everything's paid. It's 100%, and that's a nice thing. That adds up, especially for medical users. Right. So my theory in terms of which supplemental plan you pick is based on your income. If you're watching your dollars, 
okay? Right. You're gonna look towards a less expensive one. If your health history though says you're gonna be, you got a chronic condition, you're gonna be hospitalized, it's probably more advantageous to pick the more expensive one because that'll save you that inpatient deductible. So each person looks at it on their own merits of their own finances and health history. And that's why you need to be knowing all the plans, but you also right. need to be having some kind of analysis of your history. Right. Right. Correct. And, right. So, the, and, so, and so you also look at people's health Health well, records I, I, you... in talking with them in terms of identifying, for instance, I asked the question many times, when was the last time you were hospitalized? And many people, I can't even remember. Okay, good. That means the odds right. are that you won't. But it's still gambling. Insurance is gambling anyway. But one of the nice things with these plans, there's no pre-existing coverage. Correct. No pre-existing coverage. So if, you're, if, you're been, if, you've been, if, if you've been paying very, very little because you weren't planning on going to the hospital mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you see trouble coming, you can just buy one of these supplemental plans mm -hmm. and now everything's covered. There's no open enrollment period for the supplemental plans. Right. Big, right. big distinction. So and to finish my point though, you got $250 out with 100% coverage. You go in the open market nowadays for an individual plan, you're talking seven and nine hundred dollars oh, a month with yeah. deductibles, with copays. Right. So now, and, and this was really, that's why I said this is really important. So. Right. But we didn't talk much about drugs, but now mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about drugs. Drugs, okay. In, I'm going to have to elongate this show then. In four, <laughs> in four minutes. In four minutes. <laughs> i got to get that fast speak going again. No, no, <laughs> so, don't say that. Good. One of the few people I know talks faster than I do. Wow. Right? But my, it's all really interesting. My brother and I can have a 20 minute conversation in five minutes. <laughs> so, in any case, the drug plans. The drug plan came about, it's known as Medicare Part D. It came about in 2006, okay? And it's not not Medicare providing drug coverage. It's Medicare opening up the private market, the private for-profit market, to provide just prescription drug plans. In 2006, there were 54 choices. This year, there's 25, but just the same. You can imagine in my position at the hospital, as you were saying, Arthur, where all roads lead to Peter, that being the case, I knew I was gonna get bombarded with questions. So, as I jokingly have said before, I was pulling my hair out successfully, trying to figure this out in the <laughs> fall of 2005, going, what kind of plan is this? And it is a cockamamie plan, pardon my French. But nonetheless, because it basically, not to get in an editorial pulpit or a political pulpit, but it's, they sold their soul to the for-profit companies, right. the insurance companies, the pharmaceutical companies. So. But being a st stubborn person and advocating for my friends and family and so and so neighbors, there's ways to get around it. You can pick your plan. The light bulb over the head moment came when I was on the Medicare website, which is a great website, chock full of information, but too much information, yeah. and found out that if you're able to go to a navigate to a certain spot, you can put your medications in, and then it will filter all the plans based on your medications to which one covers it the best, to which one covers it the worst. And the difference can be staggering without having the factual basis of having it seen in print, the understanding of it is it all comes down to contracts. Every one of the insurance companies has a contract with every one of the pharmaceutical companies, either a good contract, ergo good coverage, mediocre contract, ergo mediocre coverage, and so on and so forth. But you wouldn't know that. They cover themselves by sending a book about this thick with all their meds, and no one's gonna read this book. So the only legal, logical way and easy way to do that is to go to this site and screen it that way. And as you were talking about before, we just ended the open enrollment period. This is the plan, Allison, as you were talking about. Remember, your Medicare card and your supplemental plan, let them collect dust. But your drug plan, you want to look at that every single year because they change every year. And that's involved with open enrollment. That's exactly. only for Part D. That's only for okay. Part D, correct. So always think, and my advice has always been, everybody that knows me over all these 12, last 12 years, is look at your plan because the only person that can get penalized if you don't is you. Look at all of your plans or just... No, no, just the drug plan. Just the, the drug, drug plan. plan. And it's relatively quick and easy to do. It's kind of painless. In fact, it's actually become kind of fun. People have come to me for years and they say, okay, how much are we going to save this year? And it's kind of fun to beat the system and save people money. So if your medications don't change, do you still Even if they to? don't change. I'll give you an example. There was a gentleman who came one year, a few years ago, when I was still at the hospital, and he came in. It was kind of funny. He said, I really don't need to be here, but my wife made me come. I said, okay, yeah. you want to take a look at your plan? Okay, but I like my plan. Okay, so I'm putting all those drugs in the plan and such, and his head was right over my shoulder looking at the screen right above me. And I put it, and his plan for next year didn't come anywhere near the top. And he says, what, what's going on here? What, what's going on? And I said, let's take a look. Sure enough, two of his medications that were covered in that particular year were just dropped from the just formula the next year. Just got dropped. His copays were like about $15 copays that year. They would have went to about $250 copay the next year. Like I've told people before, I wouldn't it? want to be the pharmacist seeing him in January. Right. right. So we just switched them to another you plan, switch into a different covered plan. the same, and you make no allegiances to your plan, but on a yearly basis. Right, they're great. So you can totally pick and, so 
for, on, on the one hand, the bad news is all the drug guys are doing the same thing. They're all right. trying to figure out how to keep you on the plan while, while reducing their cost. Right. That's their game. But on your side, once they've done that, in order to try to confuse you, you get to actually go right. look at right. everybody's. Everybody's cards are on the table right. yep. during this there. open enrollment plan. Exactly. And the only issue is, what do they all mean? Yeah. Which is reason why you gotta get somebody like this. Because yeah. otherwise you can't, and any normal human being can't yeah. figure this out. Because you're kind of, you're looking, mm -hmm. even if you're, if, if you spe even if you're looking at your old drugs, but especially if you, if you think ones. you're gonna be sick next year and there's some trouble mm -hmm. coming, mm -hmm. and so there's new drugs coming, Right. You get no clue which one's going to work. You need somebody to decode that. I actually ended up writing a letter in, in 2006 to the head of Health and Human Services, William Levitt, and I, yes. I, I complained about all the tripwires and potholes and penalties and what have you. And I got a letter back from one of his lackeys saying we didn't have enough time. Yeah. Anyway, so that, that just motivated me more to continue to help because the penalties are borne by the elder, which is not right. Right. So in any case, that's, that's the concept behind the whole open enrollment period and such. And I'll give you an idea, just the variances. There was one gentleman whose variance, if he didn't, and I kid you not, his variance would have been, if he didn't switch plans, would have been $11,355 more if he stayed with that plan, if as he, opposed to switching the, with to the With the plan that he already that's had. That's how drastically the plans changed. As far as, remember, right. what I learned after the fact is that they're doing basically what I call one of the oldest tricks in the book, the bait and switch. They're counting on the fact that roughly about 90% of our country's seniors, 90%, don't bother looking at their plans every time. Well, because they're going to say exactly what your guy said. Oh, I like my plan. Right, exactly. Because you like it right now. You just don't realize that in January, it's a different plan. Yeah, right. Plan, plans can be dropped, et cetera. So drugs can be dropped, they should Isn't say. this fun? Well, I'm. it is really fun, but I'm surprised that you didn't ask Peter, your signature question. When did he show up on the island? A long time, long ago. time ago. January 85. But another one, that. you know, came for a short time. Well, here you go. Right? Well, nobody nobody, nobody, nobody ever leaves. It's like that departing boat never leaves. So, well, that's right. This was, wasn't this fine? This was I really told you, fun. see, and we, I proved to you, I think, that neither, I didn't know about what you know about this. So the bottom line here, this is very simple. Whenever you're doing this, A, whenever you're doing this, you gotta talk to somebody like Peter who really gets it. And B, you need to look at it every year. There's no pre-existing coverages issues, so you can you can walk into any of these plans any year, but, you, but don't try to figure it out yourself because even if your current plan is right, next year, it may not be right for you. So every year you kind of need to re-examine this. And if you're like me and you're still working and haven't gone through this yet, You've got this window to figure a lot of this stuff out if you're mm -hmm. going to be retiring this year. Mm -hmm. Which you're, and I'm with you. I'm trying to figure out the same thing. So, thank you very much. This is our last show of this year. So, thank you for watching. Although I know some of the repeats will come into January. Happy holidays from both of us. Yes. We'll see you next year with uh, Frank and Mary here in Nantucket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.